All right, and welcome to the Best in Slot podcast. This is episode four, a workout podcast by the community for the community. Uh, I'm your main host, Sparty Smallwood, and we have, of course, our wonderful co-host, Midgets, and a special guest here of Firemancer. Uh, Firemancer, for those of you who don't know, is one of the senior mages in, in Death Jesters. He's been around for a number of years. He's a major theory crafter, large part of the mage community, and a proficient streamer in his own right. Uh, so welcome, welcome, Firemancer, and thanks for joining us. Welcome, Fire, and thanks for all the things you do with helping with mage logs. We really think you represent the community by doing that for the community. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. I'm stoked to be here. Grateful for the opportunity. Um, really looking forward for Antorus, and hopefully this can kind of motivate us in the right direction. Definitely. Yeah, no, I mean, it's always, this is a really good learning experience for all of us as we, you know, we had technical difficulties uh, at the start of this, you know, figuring out Skype and <laughs> figuring bit, out all of this. Bit. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's good though. Like, it's good as in the early days of this podcast to get these things sorted out and get this stuff going. So it's it's good. I'm happy. Um, for those of you who don't know, you know, Firemancer is probably what the second leading cause of wipes, right after me. Ooh, right? Uh, yeah, definitely <laughs> right before you, though, right? Yeah. No, right after me. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure after all these years, I'm the uh, number one source of wipes. Um, and obviously, you know, we're, we're getting there, but yeah. It's like. <laughs> See, I think whenever... it's your both his fault, and it's we always blame the mages, though. Well, All right. Well, it's, yeah, it's usually a can... balance between hunters, mages. You know, definitely a DPS caster, though, right? It's well, got to be uh, a ranged DPS. At the end of the day, it comes down to you know the leadership of you know why are you wiping, why are you doing this stuff. It's anyway. Uh, but let's let's talk about what's new in the community. Wait, wait. What kind of mug did you have there? Did you have a DJ this mug? This is just a basic one. I do not have oh, my DJ man. mug. I know I'm slacking. Oh, I do have it though. I've actually so I've even like unpacked it. So I know it's been a while. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> but I do you have, the, I do have, it well, like, it's like, I put it away with like other things from like BlizzCon, you know, like you keep back your collectibles or whatever. So I, I, I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, I still got to ship mine out to the, uh, the other people that wanted them. So, uh, all right, let's get going here with, uh, with what's new in the community. Uh, so with the 13th anniversary, holy crap, 13 years of this game upon us, um, we do have a number of things, um, you know, really starting up in the game, right? I mean, I started playing this game back in the File Planet beta, probably around now-ish. What game came out, what, November 23rd? Um, I started playing sometime October-ish in number of the betas, leveling up to level 39, 40 at some point. Uh, what about you guys? When did you guys start playing Okay. Um, I actually started playing uh, BC, started leveling. Um, I actually didn't really, I think, hit max level at the end of BC, and then my first raid would have been the uh, Nax and, and Wrath. So, little, little, uh, not, you know, I'm not back, I'm not a vanilla child, definitely not. Um, so, I guess, you know, the whole hype for vanilla classic servers right now, I'm just kind of like, eh, I don't know. I mean, I might try it out, but no, I definitely started in BC, and I guess really got into the game in Wrath. Well, and I started in Wrath. I'm a Wrath baby. I missed the baby Blizzard Bear by about four weeks. Ah, bummer. <laughs> yeah, I always and we're about doing that some, one. We're doing some screenshot pictures that Moonfax on the forums, and I added it onto my Twitter, of your first screenshot from WoW. I hope to see you guys. Yeah, I don't even know if I could even find that, honestly. I would have to, like, look. No, that, that's what I mean. This... Like, I have all these old hard drives that are no longer working. I must have thrown them out. Those would have had my 2004, 2005 screenshots. There's no way. And, like, I was looking at my emails the other night of, like, what file planet emails I got. I must have used a different email from 14 years ago, 13 years ago. So. <laughs> well, I kept all of them and moved them over. So I was able to find mine. Like, my I know, first like, tune was actually a warrior. Panzer would be so pleased. Well, that's actually really funny. My first two was actually a warrior too. I think I leveled like level eleven or twelve, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna swap it up." And I picked a mage, and I kind of never looked well, back. Good choice, yeah. You know, good choice for all of us. <laughs> um, so with the the anniversary upon us here, you know, we do have the green dragons back, which is super exciting for me. I was always really disappointed that they took them out. Uh, Kazak and Azuragos are back as well. Have any of you guys done them yet? I'll be honest. I don't even really know what that is. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> So Once no, a raider, I, I, always a raider. Oh man. Um, I've hit all four of them. Um, they're, they're world quests every day. You go in and um, you kill uh, two of them and then one of the green dragons. And I've put screenshots on my Twitter. But it's been a lot of fun because even back in Wrath when we would go kill um, the world dragons, they were still sort of hard. And um, 
So it's been great memories of those times long ago with my first guild. What was it hard because of the size difference, you being a gnome and them being a dragon, or were they actually hard? Yeah, well, they were actually hard, and I wasn't a gnome then. I was actually a Drenay hunter. Thank you. Ah, I see. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, that's something I want to do as well before the event goes away. So what, it alternates dragons at this point, or alternates Kazakh, Azuregos? Is that how it works? Uh, it All it rotates is the uh, dragon. So you have a different dragon every day. And of course, there's new appearances. So that's what I'm after. So I'm doing it on all my tunes to get all the appearances. Yeah, the transmog people. Wait, so uh, it just drops transmog? Are we yes. talking item level, gear, like uh, upgrade uh, there's or anything, actually, or yeah, AP? There's actually, well, there's 900 <laughs> level gear, and guess AP. what? It has your favorite feature fired. It also can Titan Forge. Oh, great. Really? Okay, so. Well, I, I know there was the, uh, like, it's up to 900 item level, so the old epics that you can't get anymore. Um, one of the, like, the ugliest corn on the cob staff, the rampant growth one, that one's up there too. But some pretty cool swords, and, you know, I think probably nature resist gear, which is what they used to drop from many years ago. So, but I guess the biggest question is, can you kite Kazakh to Stormwind or Green Dragons to Stormwind, or do they have a leashing mechanic? Has anybody tried yet? I think we need you guys to try that. We, we should totally try it after the stream, because I'd be down for that. Definitely. Wait, so you just kite it to Stormwind, and then it yeah, kills people, and then every, or... That's right. I, know, I remember I doing that's that right. back in Wrath. We tra we ta we, and Slightly. today would be the day to do it, because it's the one in Duskwood. But we should do it, you, yes. We Try to kite it to Stormwind to see if we can make that happen again. Oh, for sure. So what else was in the community? We had the Warcraft Q&A uh, recently, right? We had a lot of you know interesting responses. It was, it was a bit of a mixed response in terms of the community, in, ter uh, in terms of quality of questions and quality of answers. Um, I think one of the biggest ones that they touched on was the, uh, the no tier sets in Battle for Azeroth. Right. Yeah, I think that's what created the most controversy from the latest Q&A. Um, I mean, I'm definitely not a big fan of it. I know, like, the two of us, we've discussed it a little bit. Yeah. But um, I do feel like cutting out tier sets is just it's just a bad idea. It's just going to hurt mythic rating more so than it already is. Like, a mythic rating, especially, like, on the U.S. side. I mean, well, not even U.S., all over. Like, it's just a dying scene. Like, it really oh. is. Oh, for sure. And There's... I think we could go forever about the, the u.s rating scene at this point and you know, <laughs> what's happening there right, um, right. yeah no I, that's we'll talk about that in our leadership lounge in terms of you know how that's really going to affect um i think the rating scene in terms of uh of tier sets or you know whether it's really just semantics and, and this tier really mean just the tier bonus or the actual tier set itself um, well and I know in the discussions, and a lot of objections to people who also collect the transmog tier sets, um, they have, they're have they opening up different ideas. So I'll be curious to see where they go. I'm not completely opposed to it, but none of us, and we prove it every time Blizzard comes out and says there's going to be something different, none of us like change. So our first reaction is we hate it. Um, but I will be curious to see what they do with it going forward. Yeah, no, for sure. Um... I mean, there, there's going to be more choices for gear combinations with the Heart of Azeroth and Azurite as well. Um, so, I mean, we'll see how the, the system works out. It, it's still pretty early in its infancy, I think, in terms of, you know, pre-alpha and they're getting systems going. And, you know, even when we had expansions previewed at BlizzCon many, many years ago, they um, they definitely changed a lot. If you guys remember, like, the Prime Glyphs when the Glyph system was coming in and how that's been revamped over the years and completely, you know, nixed um, for, you know, the very minor Glyphs that we've had now or the minor... You know spell changes so you know lots well of, uh, i have to change. object to i have to object to the glyphs because they took away my main money making when they made that change well well then not everyone you know <laughs> plays the auction house like midgets here midgets makes you know hand over fist in terms of gold quite you know, the hustler here midgets yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think it's uh, more glyphs up there I think we have what Ulduar time walking also coming, which is exciting for a lot of players who you know never really did experience Ulduar. Again, was heralded as one of the the best zones or best raid experiences out there, and I definitely have a lot of fond experiences. Um, you know, lots of exploits were, were happening around that time as well. But Flame Leviathan, I thought was a great boss in terms of uh, difficulty and um, you know something new, something different for players. But I mean, it should be exciting. I mean, what do you guys think of the Ulduar time walking? Um, I mean, it should be fun. I was, I don't know. I feel like it's the whole LFR style. You queue up, everyone just aimlessly runs around, doesn't really know what they're doing. <laughs> DPS the boss. So it's like, it's not the biggest thrill to me. I mean, I get like the nostalgia feel there. It kind of throws it back, but 
I don't know. It's just like my, I guess my whole mindset on classic rating or classic wow. It's just never going to be the same exactly the way it was. Um, but uh, it's cool to kind of, you know, cue it up and do it. Sure. So. I like to try to get in there because a lot of this stuff, I didn't see it content. And next was my first raid. And Ulduar, I didn't, I wasn't really in there. So it's fun for me to go in with you guys. But getting you guys to actually come do it is the problem. I, I yeah. really enjoyed... <laughs> you guys are like, no, we killed these bosses at level. We wiped 400 million times. We don't want to do it again. And I'm like, oh, come on, come on, come show me. I want to see this and tell me a story about when oh, you man. were doing it. Yeah, like even trying to get to myself into the uh, Black Temple Time Walking, that seems like such an effort. And I like, I think I've done it once since Black Temple Time Walking and then never again. I was more excited to do Molten Core three times as a 40-person raid than, I don't know, some of these other Time Walking raids. Well, like that one dropped a mount though, right? And whenever they had the old school Molten Core, when they well, brought that you, back, or was yeah, that finished back it. In, Yeah, well, when it. we had the anniversary yeah. back in Worlds of Draenor, right? We had we got the Corehound mount for doing it, or I can't remember for logging in. Um, and then we had some of the really rare appearances, like the Ragnaros Fire Enchant uh, that dropped as well. But I mean, I don't know. Like I only had good experiences though from the Molten Core event, and you know, hopefully we will get some good ones from the Old War Time Walking. Well, just That's so fun. you know, I expect you both to take me along. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll get, you know, DJs yeah. and Zeus to Heroes, and of course, Mages will have to come along. Um, so with Artifact Skins right now, so one of the other changes, or, you know, the announcements was with Artifact Skins, um, except for, what, Mythic 15 and Mage Tower will be able to be gotten after Legion, or you'll be able to receive them after Legion, um, which basically means a week like this week, which is a fairly easy week, right, for Mythic 15, uh, get it mm -hmm. done before the the end of the expansion, right? I mean, you still have plenty of time, but realistically, this is a really good prime moment um, because later on, as difficulties increase, it'll be more challenging. And then again, by the end of Ant Taurus will be another good opportunity to get your Mythic 15 done as well as Mage Towers. So these next couple of weeks are a prime moment. Have you guys collected your, you know, your 15s and your time or your uh, Mage Tower stuff? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I remember when they actually first came out with the Mage Tower one, I stayed up way too late that night and like, Slam my head against the keyboard trying to get it done was not able to do it I think I came back a couple of days later and got it But like people were like it was actually really really cool when they first came out with it because I guess all your class scores were really kind of excited Everyone's yeah. all like trying to be the first race and be the first ones to finish it in time and all that But yeah, I really love the mage tower. I really hope to see I hope like they come out with more things like that in the future I really do. I thought it was a great aspect to, to Legion yeah, no, and I think that that's the kind of reception that exactly they want. Uh, and I was the exact same way. You know, I was doing the Holy Paladin one for a little bit, and I was, you know, doing it off stream a little bit just to not embarrass myself. And, you know, I did it a couple of times, and, you know, I think I got it by the second round um, just because it was so weirdly done in terms of, like, I didn't have people to heal my raid frames. I had to redo all my macros and redo yeah. how I'm healing people, and it was just a huge pain in the ass. But, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I was grateful when I got it. Yeah, I remember like we would go over like what legendaries to use yeah. and like as weeks would go on, people found out a trick like you could take your Ross Elemental and have them stack on a rune and so you didn't have to stack there and so you could stack somewhere else. Like just little tips and stuff that usually like, I guess came out of the woodwork as the weeks went on. And I remember thinking, wow, I wish I would have used that when I originally had done this. It would have made this 10 times easier. But yeah, mm -hmm. so. I haven't gotten in there, but usually I blame Sparty because oh, every time I get in there. No, he comes to me and says, hey, Midge, I need this, this, and this. And so I get, I'm in there for like two tries, and then somebody needs something. But my game plan is to get it out this week and maybe hide from you all for a while. You should uh, you use that, that new Blizzard system where you're able to go and hide, right? That oh, you mean appear offline? That's yeah, one of my yeah. favorite features, but you still <laughs> find me. <laughs> well, I know your character, so I know exactly where to find you. Uh, uh, what about... Um, your Mythic 15, have you done that one two midgets? I did get that done. Um, w the guys ran me. They 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 make me do Mythic Plus because yeah. I, I don't want to. I'm under 100 for the, the, the X pack. Um, but they have started this, hey, Midge, have you gotten your, your plus 10 this week? And then they want proof. So there you have mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> well, I mean, you're going under 100, so it's more quality over quantity, right? You keep going to those high keystones, and, and that's totally fine. You don't need to farm Mythic Pluses, but just get those high ones done. Um, I, I'm after Moros. So if, if, if it's a lower care, you can probably get me in. Can you actually get the uh, Moros from the Yeah, the is there a reason? Yeah, is that, can you? I'm not too sure. Yeah, you can. Uh, well, not crazy. from... I, uh, 
Yes, I think you can. I know you can from Mythic Zero. I'm not sure. Yeah, from Mythic can. Zero. Yeah, I don't know if you can from yeah, Keystone. Yeah, Zero. Yeah, I would. I would assume just Mythic Zero, honestly. Okay. But I did try to escape. Check that they out. Keep tracking me down. Yeah, no. Well, oh, yeah, sure. this, this definitely would be a good way to do it, right? Because I mean, you're rock. You got the Sanguine, the Grievous. I mean, you want to be looking for the easy fixes, like your teaming, yeah. volcanics, stuff like that. So, this would be a good time to do it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I mean, I think in terms of if you. Um, if you can push it or you've got some friends, you know, bug me, me, fireman, whoever to help push those 15 keystones with you, you know, that'd be awesome. All right, but let's move on to, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to okay. say, uh, no, I'm trying to hide from y'all. Y'all, I ain't bugging anybody. Oh, we'll find you. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the uh, next segment here, the Leadership Lounge. Um, really, this is a, a really great, uh, oh, that's the wrong one. But the, uh, the Leadership Lounge, we're able to, um, to, to really talk about some of the, the statements from the Q&A, TOS uh, being tuned a little bit differently um, in terms of last bosses. So that, that was something that was mentioned, I think, during the Q&A. They, they specifically said, you know, Mistress, Avatar, Kill Jaden were, were tuned a little bit, you know, too difficult um, for, for what they were. I mean, what did you feel about that fire? Um, yeah, so we definitely like the three heavy hitters, right? Your Mistress, Avatar, Gay J. Um, I feel like they weren't necessarily hard bosses, but like the biggest issue was just like the raid comp, right? You needed to have people with immunities, give or take. I mean, a lot of immunities. Um, so I think that is just not good design. Um, and I think, I mean, Blizzard's definitely stated this, they're aware of it, but um, I wouldn't say they were too hard. It was just too Pacific based off comp wise. That was the issue, I would think. Well, they didn't say that it was necessarily off of comp. They said it was more personally uh, punishing. So if one person messed up, um, you would wipe the entire race. Well, so they had I, so many mechanics that everybody was mad at that one person. I mean, I kind of agree with that, though. I think, you know, if you are mythic rating 20 people in there, you should be able to rely on those other 20 people. And I, I get, like, yeah, one person mess up. You shouldn't still be able to kill a boss. Um I see how that can get frustrating and you know our, our 400 plus attempts on Avatar it definitely get, get, did get frustrating but um, I mean I like that mindset but I don't know maybe a little not so I don't know kind of like find a balance between the two I would say somewhere around. Yeah, I mean, a good prime example of, of what they called was those binary mistakes is Maiden, right? Specifically, you know, you're four minutes into the encounter. If one person makes one small mistake, you're wiping. That's it, right? And, and that's super frustrating. And you go back to fights in World's Rainer like Brackenspore, where you had a 10-minute long fight. And if one guy missed an interrupt nine minutes in, you were wiping. That was it. And those encounters are super, super frustrating to do. But, I mean, yeah, go back, going back to comp, right? Rogues were crazy OP. I mean, it, it boggles my mind how... You know, some of the devs didn't communicate in terms of, you know, hey, it's too much so garris and rogues can be so crazy good here. And, you know, they, they did admit that, yeah, we, we made some mistakes here in terms of tuning. And, you know, going into Antorus, you know, it'll be the same kind of thing where, yeah, the cutting edge guilds are going to do their world first. And eventually, you know, the content will be nerfed down, which is, you know, what they do. So enough people actually see the content and are able to devour it in time. But... Um, I mean, hopefully it's it's more and more learning. Um, you know, fewer of those mistakes are being repeated, but I guess time will tell. Well, and they really had a disparity in the tuning on tanks, and we found that with, you oh, know, if druids. you look at Kill Jaden, mm -hmm. um, you know, most of the tanks, it, it was the, they showed a pie chart, and like 97% of it was druids. So it's definitely something that they're aware of, and I hope they, going forward, are more cognizant of. Um, didn't but they that also was already like didn't they nerf bears at some point? Yeah, and there's some good. They did, but I mean they're just so good for KJ too, though, right? Yeah. I think that's kind of why Those they came back. Crazy good. Mm -hmm. And the feral charge is to make it so they can skip the singularities or whatever. Like I mean, I think they nerfed them, but then just KJ they were they were just so designed well to fit in with it, and so they kind of just <laughs> came back. Yeah. You know? So if you guys were going to give a rating to Tomb of Sargeras. Sajera, what what would you give it out of 10? I would probably give it a 6. I think it had a lot of potential for a great, you know, lore-filled tier with, you know, yes, all these bosses were finally killing, but the execution in, in terms of comp and design was really, really lacking. I would have loved to give it a solid, you know, 8, 8.5, 9. Um, and I think other tiers like, you know, like the Lei Shen tier, like Throne of Thunder was fantastic for that. Uh, but this one, I, I think, definitely fell short. 
Yeah, honestly, I would have to, I mean, not to echo, echo what you just said, but yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Like, I think I had a lot of potential. A lot of the fights I was excited for when I was reading, you know, PTR testing, beta testing, whatever, like, they, they seem really cool. Um, even some of the fights are really fun. I mean, I actually enjoyed Avatar because, you know, I can just kind of pad it as a fire mage, but I thought it was a cool design fight. You had the soaking, you had the lanes, you had to, like, stay in your lane. I mean, it was a good fight. It's just... I think honestly, just all the soaking immunity abilities came into factor. Like a lot of people will, will ask me a lot, you know, hey, if I play an Ellie Shaman or a Prot Warrior, am I going to get benched? And I'm usually like, no, dude, like no one is actually going to bench you for your class. But, you know, I, mean, I, I felt stupid because honestly, it kind of came to the point where like Ellie Shamans were really bad because they really weren't able to soak anything and Prot Warriors are just kind of non existent, you know? So I don't know. It's just, it, they needed to make it more balanced, I guess, two classes. So you didn't have to stack a rogues or something, you know, specific class. Yeah, well, I, I just that... want to... Co- no, go ahead. I, I just want to comment that I'm astonished that you liked Pad. <laughs> right, definitely. No, yeah, I <laughs> I loved Avatar. I, I think Avatar was our most wipes uh, progression this year, and I had no problem with it. I really didn't. <laughs> it was a fun fight for me. Oh, like so. big numbers get to cleave, you know, that fire mage right. stuff. I, I can see why, you, you. I mean, it's fun. I don't know, it was, right. it was a good one. It was different. Um, I don't know. I, I thought the first bunch of bosses were awesome fun. And then by Avatar Kill Jade, and I just, I, I hated the tier. And I was absolutely done with it. Yeah, I mean, Mistress, I hated Mistress. I think that was a really poorly designed fight. And I think that kind of killed the tier midway. And then, like, yeah. once everyone got through Mistress, it's like, I don't know. Then you kind of were already burnt out by the time you got to Avatar and KJ, you know, so. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's a great, great point. I, I do agree. Um, okay, so let's move on to the tier being removed. So that's something we touched on a little bit in our earlier segment um, in terms of, you know, the tier being removed. What does that exactly mean, right? So um, one thing they talked about was the the cosmetic designs of those tiers. So it's no longer, you know, the 23rd iteration of the Paladin or Priest tier. It's more thematic in terms of, well, this one will be based off, you know, a troll raid or this one will be based off, you know, an old god raid. But it'll still be somewhat class specific. I hope that's the direction they're taking rather than, the, you know, the very generic PvP armor sets where it's plate and then this theme. Um, but I mean, in terms of tier, is it more, well, we're just removing tier bonuses. It's still the same tier, right? Like if you want to collect transmogs, you can use any of these three pairs of gloves and they will still count towards your set, but you don't have a tier bonus, right? You know, since, you know, tier three, there was the example they made where, you know, you had eight pieces to collect and now they made it great where it was uh, four pieces, four piece bonuses, but up to six pieces. So it gave you some flexibility. Um, even fire, what are your thoughts on that one? Uh, so I've never collected the transmog from a tier. I mean, like that just doesn't really, you know, um, intrigue me at all. I mean, I, I look at rating the whole, a good 50% part of rating is to get the tier sets. It's always been like that. Um, tier sets have always been overpowered. Um, they always like make a class shine. It's always been like that extra little icing on top of the cake, you know, as far as like your DPS goes and whatnot. Um, really kind of bummed about it. And I hope that they bring something in with the Azurite or something to kind of compensate for it. But I, I don't know. I think tier bonuses mean a lot. I really do. Well, one of the reasons, one of the reasons, one of the reasons we we brought up this topic was because of your tweet uh, mm-hmm. in regards to having these sort of items in game take away your motivation to mythic raid, and it's something we want to discuss because I I'm not sure I fully understand it, and maybe other people share your same views, and that so I think that's how this podcast came to be was actually based on your tweet and, and our subsequent conversation about it because you were picking on us poor casuals um, of what what motivates you to raid and why this is such a big deal well I mean like I, I mean I go back to when I first started well I mean obviously it wasn't vanilla so like Wrath um, I would love to kind of just chill and storm or Dow I, I guess back then and kind of inspect the dude on the big cool mount next to me and like wow look at this guy you know he's decked mm-hmm. out He's got his tier set, he's got his trinkets, you know, he's ready to go. What's this tier set do? Wow, it does this. I don't even know what those words mean. That's awesome. And it, I would just, it would like, it would motivate me, you know? And like, I would yeah. see that. And I remember like, go back to like Blackrock Foundry. I remember the tier set for a fire mage was the four set. And it was actually amazing and I miss it. It was, um, and it was like a random proc. And whenever we would proc, we would have 100% crit for like five seconds and we would just pretty much blow things up. And it was, it was amazing. Like tier sets are, like I said, they're just like that extra, 
fuel that raiders would get versus, you know, your PvPers or your people who just do dungeons. And I mean, I love Mythic Plus. I think it's a great system. Um, but it's kind of like, okay, so why do I have to get 20 people in a guild to Mythic Raid when I can just get five and just do Mythic Plus and, you know, you still have the same gear and it's just not really a big difference. Yeah, I mean, that's going to touch on Mythic exclusivity in terms of, you know, what those tiers look like. And, you know, going to this podcast, my thought was, you know, this is a fantastic idea. You know, it gives so much more flexibility. People are going to be pigeonholed into this four-piece, two-piece crap or, you know, just whichever pieces they need to do. And there'll be a lot more flexibility in terms of, you know, what pieces of gear they can wear. So those gloves are not going to be crappy gloves or gloves that you're going to use into your tier set, but those are gloves that you can potentially use long term. Um, in terms of class balancing, right, a lot of the, those classes are balanced around those tier sets. So maybe it'll give, you know, more onus on Blizz to balance the classes probably more correctly rather than around a four piece or two piece bonus for rating. But I mean, yeah. you, did you did touch on a really good point, though, and that's not something I considered, is that raiders really aspire to that. That's motivation for players to have that tier set. And I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. And that was a really great perspective of well, I see this guy with tier set, what does it do? And it's that that awe and that allure of that tier set. And whether it, you know, it makes you cast sheep faster or it makes you run faster, like that's still the allure of it. Um, so I, I don't know, I think if Blizzard captures that, what you're looking for and what you mentioned there, along with that flexibility potentially of not having tier bonuses, then, then maybe that'd be the right direction. But, you know, that's a really good point. I think the reason why they did it, honestly, and, and it does need to be addressed, it does need to be balanced. I mean, I, I look at my Frostmage set of gear. I mean, I'm wearing 905 legs from Gul'dan just so I can rock the two set from TOS. And, like that, and that's always been an issue, right? People use tier sets yep. or two sets bonuses from past tiers. So they just need to either disable them or something like that instead of just completely getting rid of the system. Well, one of the interesting things that they spoke about was when you guys get your Mythic Chess, you're deleting so much of that gear because it's not tier. And it's supposed to be more flexible within the empowerment of the pow um, the amulet that's going to have some of those same capabilities. And they were very clear. And even Eon said they, were, they weren't going to take away that motivation. They're just changing it. So I'm sort of in the wait and see thing. But I do think it's important to recognize that you guys do equate that to being, you know, mythic raiders and going and doing those things. But you say we're sim same gear if we're doing the mythic 10s or 15s, and that's not really true. You guys still, um, I come in casually. I, uh, we've obviously discussed how little I do mythic pluses, um, but I'm rocking about 10 to 15 eye levels less than you. And overall, you guys are more geared. Your character you get to your maximum character at least a month to six weeks before the rest of the people because you have other buffs and other benefits. So how does that all play in? Well, I mean, you could do the same thing with Mythic Plus. I mean, I got an upgrade from Mythic Plus a week ago. I, I think it's a great system right now because, I mean, I love getting rings and necks and belts and random pieces from Mythic Plus. I mean, there are tons of upgrades. I mean, I've got seen more 950 pieces drop in Mythic Plus than I have in raids. I mean, there's a good balance there. Um, but I feel like with no no bonus sets, no tier sets, why not just get a group of five and just run? You, you can push yourself. You can push high ranks, push mm -hmm. high keys. There's leadership boards. I mean, it's got the whole the whole nine yards, everything a rating has in a five man group. So why? it's almost like when we go back to 25 main rating to when they cut it down to 20. It's like, OK, well, eventually, are we going to be seeing us turn into just a five man rating scene? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a really good point, and that's sort of what we want to talk about next is, you know, losing that incentive to raid, right? If you're taking away tier sets, you know, for players, for some players, that's definitely their incentive to raid. And, you know, in terms of, well, why not just do it in a five man? Well, is there enough mythic exclusivity, right? Enough reason to raid, right? So what do we have now? We you have titles, right, which which are pretty cool. Uh, what's our, the most recent title we got? Uh, the Darkener. The Darkener, right? So for, for Kill and Kill Jaden. Um, we do have mounts as well, so Gul'dan mount, for instance. Uh, I think there's what mounts in the next tier for, for mythic raiders. Um, occasionally there's pets as well. And, and part of that's achievements too. But I mean, is there enough exclusivity in terms of, of rating? 
you know, I, mean, I wouldn't think so at all. I mean, I, I, I can't even remember the last time I looked at someone's title. Um, I, I do get a few whispers every now and then saying, oh, congrats on the Darkener title. But I, I hardly look at other people's titles. And I guess that kind of goes back to me even, you know, be, looking at other people's gear. It just doesn't happen. It's just not the same anymore. Um, but yeah, there definitely needs to be more incentive to Mythigrade. Um, like there was no Mount this year. I mean, I know they kind yeah. of, you know, they kind of go back and forth. Um, they don't want to always be in Mount, but maybe even like a cool aura. Like, you know, let me like have like a, <laughs> Let me let my character show up with a cool little outline. I don't know. Like it, it has to be. I don't know. I would like to. That's see a pretty something. cool idea. I really, yeah. You yeah. Know? No. I mean, even like cosmetic things like that. Yeah. Right. For killing mm -hmm. mythic, and that goes back to your earlier point of like, yeah, this guy's glowing. This guy's really right. cool. He must exactly. have done something awesome, right? This so... guy has saved us from kill Jaden, and Azeroth is safe due to this guy. You know, like I, I feel like there should be more of a separation because that's going to motivate other people to mythic raid. You know, it is like. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, well, what about Titan Forging? So that's been a, you know a mixed bag as well, and, and you know some people hate it, some people like it. Um, you know, my personal thought is, well, I mean, it's Titan Forging. It doesn't really affect me. I mean, it, yes, it's cool when stuff Titan Forges, and yes, I'm still doing the occasional normal heroic with the viewers or the guild or you know Mythic Pluses and for that chance of Titan Forge. And I think the philosophy behind it is is really awesome, where you can log in anytime, you can help your friends out, and there's a chance that you get an upgrade, even for a high end Mythic Raider. Like I still have a heroic neck 925 when I'd love to get a Mythic Titan Forge something. Um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on Titan Forging going forward? I mean, given that they said they're going to make some adjustments. Yeah, well, they definitely need to make adjustments. I will agree. Um, I do remember going back in like, um, I guess before Throne of Thunder, I think is when they first came out with Thunder Forging. I think it was called back then. I mean, I get the idea of it. You don't want to just do the tier, get your BIS in every single category and then just stop there. So they introduced th uh, Titan Forging to make it to give Mythic Raiders a reason to re-clear. So I, I like the idea. It's a great idea. I think that they've gone way super crazy with it and they really need to cut back and fix it on um, the fact that an item can jump 30 item levels just based off a low rng roll i mean i think that's a bit ridiculous and it, it honestly it's, it's annoying you know i hate seeing a <laughs> no offense but a, i hate seeing like an lfr raider with that 920 whatever trinket that i've been wanting to grind and i've been killing the same boss for weeks and weeks and i'm just never gonna get it you know like Why? that's just I mean, he just because won the lottery, it's though. Ordinary, right? Well, I'm happy for it, but it feels like every LFR Raider won the lottery. Okay, so like, what? What are the <laughs> only the Raiders ones that die though, right? right? Only the ones right. that you know die in AFK. Yeah. Those are the ones getting the time yeah, for the ones gear. that attack the boss and go AFK. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, would you guys leave me alone with my one piece of <laughs> 955 gear? I think I think you will survive. You have my pets behind your mythic achievements. Leave me alone. I get one piece of gear. Yeah, I mean, I I'm, I think it's fine. Like, if someone that does LFRs or normals gets that, you know, that one lottery piece of 955, you know, that C star, and they like to taunt me with it, you know, whatever. Like, I, I don't care. I'm happy for them. Yes, I have to work harder, you know, through Mythic Pluses and, and running the guild to, to to get something similar, right? And um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really affect me. Like, it doesn't, I feel it doesn't depreciate my gear the pieces that i get and yeah they got lucky but there's no way they're going to win the lottery and get a full set of 940s and and go from there they're gonna have a couple of pieces but at the end of the day they're not going to be you know i would say as skill for or as dedicated as a raider as you know someone in a mythic guild right and i i don't know i think it it's that intrinsic value of well why do i do mythic raids anyway right well don't forget guys you're dedicated to mythic raiding and some of us are dedicated to crafting or other things so us getting a little piece of where what you have or you guys getting some of what we have is how blizzard gets us all to explore the different content just remember fire i wouldn't have been able to uh, torment you in hots if they hadn't put a warcraft pet in there right. so there's a little bit of getting everybody to experience some of the content and just because they don't mythic raid doesn't mean they don't work as hard. And I think that's something that we need to get out there. And I don't want to discredit or discount all of the hard work that mythic raiders have out there. But all of us make part of this game. If it wasn't for me, for example, doing all of the cooking and crafting, mm -hmm. um, that makes a difference and it contributes to the community. So don't forget that. But I have a question because I know, and I'll use the Arcana crystal. Um, there are people who have been trying to get that trinket since the beginning of Legion, and mm -hmm. one and one raider in <laughs> <laughs> one raider in you have two. Let's just say two mages in the raid, 
and one has a 860 Arcana crystal and you have a 955. What does that do for the disparity between your DPS and how does that add to your frustration levels or um, that mythic motivation if you've been trying to get that piece and you're still sitting with an 860? It's honestly depressing. Like, I mean, I, so that's a perfect example. And one more thing I wanted to talk about for Titan Forging. I mean, as a mythic raider, I mean, a lot of what I do is to parse, is to try to get the top DPS and whatever. But um, I guess going back to the Arcana Crystal, I I currently use an 860 Arcana Crystal whenever we kill Mythic Kill Jaden. And that's just that's ridiculous. Crazy. And I, I, it really is. And it's just, it, I mean, well, it puts me in a good item level to parse because it drops my item level super low compared to where <laughs> we're at. So a little perk there, but no, that's besides the point. I mean, so I look at that and I'm seeing I'm using 861 and I go and look at the top 10 fire mages and I see that the max guy has, has a 955 with a socket. And I'm just like, okay, it's like, is there any, in any world am I ever going to out DPS this guy when he hates guy? like 90 item levels on me just based off an rng roll and like that is like where i'm saying that they need to they need to cut that out they need like that is just too ridiculous they need to stop they need to cut it back i mean give i remember when they first came out with titan forging you titan forging thunder forging is what it was yeah. called right and it was only plus five i think right was the max it would go it maybe plus 10 it, it was wasn't plus six or okay yeah that's right, right because yeah. it was like those awkward numbers right yeah, yeah okay exactly and so it was just like a smidget a little bit better and so you know if you got beat by a guy with a you know, Thunder Forge one, you can be all like, okay, dude, you got me because of that. But I mean, nothing too crazy. Like now yeah. it's just, it's insane. Like now we're talking like 95 item levels or something. Just, it's really ridiculous. That's, I mean, that's a really good perspective. Um, and I, I mean, I swing a little bit but the other way with it where, hey, awesome. You know, one of my guildies got a 955, the other one's got an 860. It's still an upgrade for the guild, right? And, you know, jokingly when, you know, when other healers from from DJs or Zeros to Heroes get like a crazy good C star and like a 955 and I'm sitting there with like my 915 or my 930 C star, I'm like, oh, well, you know, well, he needs that crutch to keep up with me, right? And that's how I feel better about myself where, you know, I've got the skill, I'll give him the items and, you know, that'll be fine. But I think at the end True. of the day, it, at the end of the day, it's, you know, what helps the guild and that's sort of what I'm after too. And, and yeah, you know, that, that personal accomplishment is, is something that you really touched on really well in terms of, well, that's the value. Like it's tough to compete with those kinds of things, right? Where it's 95 item levels. Um, and I mean, if you're using 860 uh, trinket on Kill Jaden, I mean, that shows a lot in terms of, well, how crazy OP is this damn thing, right? Right, and a lot of that roots from just the trinket being a poor, really, really bad design. Um, but I think the Titan forging and all that does play a factor too, though, definitely. So. Awesome. Um, so well, let's go to the, our final segment here, the uh, the Sparty Soapbox. Uh, but with this one here, let's let's go to Firemancer first in terms of um, what really motivates you to raid. So you touched on it, you know, majority of the podcast here. But what truly, you know, burns your loins? Why do you want to do mythic raiding? <laughs> Uh, well, um, might have to get the loins checked out there, but I mean, um, mythic rating, uh, I mean, it's great. It's a great feeling being in there. Um, yeah, it does get frustrating and it can get old, but I mean, just being with a group, um, I mean, obviously 20, but we're not just limited for 20. I mean, the whole guild, the whole community, they're supporting you. Um, it's a great feeling to work on something as a group, to finally accomplish it, to f figure out what works best, to figure out, okay, if I'm standing to the left of here, I don't have to stop my casting during this mechanic. Just like going pull by pull, trying to figure out what is the best ideal way to do this boss and then, you know, successfully executing it afterwards. Um, um, one one thing you kind of mentioned earlier, you know, well, if this guy has a 950, and I, one thing I guess I didn't really think about this aspect of it, if I do see, I guess back in the day, you know, where we didn't all have BIS legendaries, it was always like my goal to out DPS the guy that had the, uh, the BIS legendaries, right? So I mean, mm -hmm. definitely ranking, damage, parsing, that comes, it plays a big factor. Um, that definitely what I would say motivate me, but it just, overall, if I had to summarize it, I would say the great feeling you get when you actually accomplish and down a boss that you've been working on for so long with a group. Yeah, no, well, and we, that's, sorry, go ahead, Midgets. I was just gonna say, we share that. One of the things that we get to enjoy with watching both of you guys stream is we get to share in the satisfaction and sometimes the uh, flipping off of a boss that you've just recently killed. So you bring us along for the ride and we appreciate it. Sparty, what do you think? Uh, well, what motivates me? Uh, I mean, I, I, I've i got that competitive drive. Like, I need to slay dragons. And, you know, even gear aside, I mean, there's, there's weeks that go on in Mythic where 
we don't get any gear. Like, nothing drops for us, and that's fine, but we're still there every single day helping our raiders, helping our team, and progressing through these bosses, right? So, a lot of what Fire said is absolutely right. You know, we're there for the drive, and we're there for the community, and the people that we raid with, if we hated the people that we raided with, and we, they really, really annoyed us, right, then there's no way we'd, we'd be enjoying it, no way we'd be raiding with these guys. But it comes down to, you know, what really, what, what makes you passionate for, right? We see that constant, okay, well, we, you know, wiped, uh, killed Jade at 90%, that's awesome, that's our new best, and now 88%, and now 85%, and we see those constant levels of improvement every single time, and that makes you feel good. And then after, you know, the 400 pulls that, you, that it takes to kill a boss sometimes, when you finally, finally kill it, with that group of 20 raiders or 25 raiders whatever it is that's such an amazing feeling and oftentimes when i you know i look back to my old videos or the outro videos where like i'm just cheering and that that euphoria is there of killing black and and lei shen and all those other things that's such a rewarding feeling and it's that i don't know it's those endorphins going when you when you finally let go and you finally kill that damn boss right that's what we keep striving for every single time what makes it worth it all that frustration all that fun stuff and you know with with the viewers there too you need to find what what really makes you passionate about killing these bosses or doing pet battles or whatever it is right find that passion and stick with it right that's what's going to make you happy and just keep building upon that right yes there's going to be changes going into the battle for Azeroth and change is tough, but if you have that innate passion for what you love, then you'll keep doing it, right? I mean, I plan on raiding for as long as I can. I want to keep doing it because I love the people that I raid with, right? It's it's a great family, and whether we're doing US 50 stuff or US 100 stuff or we're just, you know, screwing around in heroics, I love raiding with these guys, and that's what really motivates me. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, like, yeah, we, we can complain and talk about the tier sets and all this, but at the end of the day, I mean, I'm still going to be there, ready to go, you know, when they release his mythic raids, so. Well, that's good, because Sparty needs somebody to yell at fire. <laughs> Always, yeah, I got that, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doing it for well, years. <laughs> well, we can't wait, you know, to have uh, Battle for Azeroth and Allied Races and, you know, the dank Iron Dwarf uh, Firemans are, you know, rolling in there with oh. fireballs. <laughs> It's going to be uh, hella lit, don't worry. <laughs> lit AF. <laughs> All right, so uh, with that, we're going to close up. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Firemancer, for, for being our special guest today. You know, it's a good learning experience for all of us. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's twitch.tv slash, slash Firemancer. Is it Firemancer? Firemancer, wow. Uh, just Firemancer. Just yeah. Firemancer. Uh, you can find him on Twitter as well. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, Firemancer, wow. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, they, they there it is. There it is. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so check it out, guys. He's got a great Discord, huge mage community, great theory crafter, always super helpful with with logs. Whether you know what kind of caster you are, um, definitely check him out. And thank you again, midgets, for for you know helping produce this show and helping be our, our co-host here as usual, and you know being voluntold to this position. I really do appreciate. It. So thank you very much. And we'll I'll see y'all next week. What are we talking about next week, Sparty? So next week, uh, we'll be talking about Antora. So our Coach's Corner, uh, just due to technical difficulties with our video, it will be postponed until next week. Uh, we'll probably be doing a Saturday-Sunday session for all 11 bosses in terms of strats, positioning, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll be talking about Antorus and, and prep and those kinds of things, as well as the uh, finalizing the Warcraft anniversary and some Green Dragon stories. People um, really want to hear about these and Root Leaf's Gambit and the diplomacy that went on. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have time this week to do it, but we'll definitely talk about those things next week. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Firemancer Midgets, uh, as well. We'll see you guys next week. And as always, live your life heroically. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.